Welcome to the Global Fluency Podcast. This is a space we've created to explore the components of diversity, inclusion, and cultural competency. Cultural competency. And all of the ways in which these components present themselves in our professional and personal lives. Be it language, culture, socioeconomic class, gender, race, ability level, age, or so many other identifiers. Everything begins with a conversation. conversation. Join us in this space where we seek to empower, educate, and uplift by creating authentic conversations on issues that affect us every day in every way. We look forward to you joining us in our discussions with everyone from thought leaders, diversity and inclusion strategists, students to CEOs in the corporate, education, and nonprofit sectors. Let's discuss how we can better understand differences and leverage commonality. Let's do away with political correctness, explore ideation, build community, and create allies. Let's start an authentic conversation. This is the Global Fluency Podcast, and this is Bertine Crevacore West. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Global Fluency. My name is Bertine Crevacore West, and I am your host. I'm delighted to have with me today Ms. Tanya Morris, the generational connector. She's going to speak to us about really how to help people across multiple generations communicate in the workplace to create a more inclusive work environment. So, Tanya, thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm excited. I'm excited to have you on too. And, you know, just so um, our guests get a little um, personal um, feedback about our relationship, um, I got the opportunity to meet you. I want to say it was a year and a half ago. Maybe yeah. Close to two. And so um, I met you at um, a, a, um, a speaker's um, kind of event. And you were so wonderful, so engaging, and you just came up to me and, and I automatically liked you. I knew that your message was a powerful one. And so you were gracious enough to make time for me and meet with me and talk to me about what it is you did and, and really got me thinking about diversity and inclusion in a broader way than I had ever considered before. And so um, I talk to people about diversity and inclusion often, and I say to them that there are multiple um, levels of diversity. It's mm -hmm. not race, it's not just ethnicity. But you had touched upon something that was so, as, as you like to use the word fresh, right? So mm -hmm. fresh and new to me um, with regard to multiple generations. I hadn't thought about it too much in depth until I met you. So thank you for planting those seeds in my head um, because really it, it helped really reinvigorate my thinking about this particular um, segment of diversity and how inclusion plays a part. So what I'm going to do right now is um, I'm going to tell our guests a little, our listeners, I should say, a little bit about you. So Tanya Morris is our generational connector, and she's the founder of Tanya Morris Speaks, which provides leaders with training solutions that cultivate a generally, a generationally inclusive workplace. Before starting her business in 2010, Tanya was director of human resources for one of the largest state pension agencies in the Southeast. She also worked in an HR leadership capacity in other industries, including government, retail, information technology, and education. Tanya's passion for understanding the different dynamics of people led her on a quest to solve generational issues within organizations. Tanya noticed that the workforce was aging and changing, so she provided training solutions on engaging and managing a multi-generational workforce to be productive. With more than 20 years of progressive HR experience, Tanya provides keynote speeches, lunch and learns, and workshops for organizations and associations across the Southeast. She has partnered with organizations such as Chick-fil-A, Oracle, Spelman, and Kennesaw University, just to name a few, to bring training solutions for engaging millennials in the workplace, working with leaders to transform their cultures by attracting, developing, and retaining a workforce that is generationally inclusive. Tanya holds a BS in Business Administration from the University of South Florida. She currently serves on the Board of Directors for the Millennial Chamber of Commerce, 
where she also serves as the organization's HR director and volunteers for the Women's Entrepreneurial Opportunity Project. She resides in Grayson, Georgia, with her husband of 24 years and two sons. In her free time, Tanya loves collecting and making jewelry and is known in the community as the jewelry lady, <laughs> which I love. And I'm not going to ask how you find the time <laughs> because I know that all of these things are important, so we must make the time. So you, speaking of making time again, thank you for making time to be a part of this, this um, interview, this podcast. I'm so thrilled to have you on the show. So let's just dive in. Okay. Um, so my first question to you is, what inspired you to do this type of work? You know, I, like I stated in my bio, I saw the workplace changing around me. And I saw aging, I saw technology, I just saw a different disruption, if you will, in a good way. And so I have two boys, I have a millennial, and we'll talk about that, and we ha I have a Z generation, so they keep me fresh and young, and I do a lot of focus groups. So I thought, wow, the, the workforce is getting ready to change, and I'm a change agent. By that, I have to be a change agent. So I really w went on a quest to learn and get in the mind of this, these different generations and, and the work expectations and all those different things. So I decided that I don't think organizations are really prepared for what's getting ready to take place. That was in 2000, really seven. And so I decided that I really want to be the generational connector because I really want to connect all the generations in the workplace because for the first time in the history of workplace, we got five generations in the workplace. Wow. So I did a lot of research. Um, just want to kind of understand what's different. What's the perspective? It, it's been an amazing ride. It I has. Can I can imagine five generations. So that's kind of my next question then. So I've got four listed, so I need you to tell me the fifth, but if you can tell our listeners, um, give us the characteristics of a baby boomer, a Gen Xer, a millennial, and a Gen Zer, and then okay. fill in that fifth one, if you please. Okay, well, let me, I'll give you an overview of the, all five of them, then I'll give you the expectation. So we have the traditionists still in the workplace. They're the oldest generation in the workplace. They're still working, and sometimes they're working by choice. You know, they want to work and get out, and most of the time it's part-time. But they were born 1928 to 1944. So you still have some of them. You go to Walmart, the greeters, that's most time the traditionals, okay? Then you got the boomers, which is the second largest generation in the workplace, about, what, 75 million in the workplace today? So they're around 1945 to 1964, then you have the sandwich generation, which is called the Gen X. Yes, indeed. And yes, the Gen X, 1965 to 1979. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then we have, that's the third largest generation in the workplace. So they have about 61 million in the workplace today. But the most often talked about and misunderstood is our millennials. <laughs> and 1980 to 1994, and um, they're about 86 million and growing. 86 million and growing. They are your future, 86 million plus. And then we have our new, yes. Yes, yeah, so the next generation the most talked about and misunderstood generation and the largest generation in the workplace is the millennials, 1980 to 1994, 86 million plus. These are the future. They are the future leaders in the workforce. And then our next newest and youngest generation, we call them Generation Z. Mm -hmm. And they're born 1995 and beyond. And so we don't have a whole lot of data how many in the workplace right now, but they are coming. So now we have five generations in the workplace. And you asked the question, you know, how, you know, how is this multi-generation working? See, I believe I think diversity and inclusion is very important, yes, but generational inclusiveness is equally important. Mm -hmm. You know why it's important? Because they all have different work expectations. We communicate different. For example, you got a boomer. A boomer, you know, type of person, they, they pretty much occupy leadership positions right now, the C-suites. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so they're getting ready to exit out of the workplace and they have a lot of that institution knowledge. Okay. And so their communication style and work ethic, they believe in working hard. 
you know, I, I paid my dues. That's why they, they were the ones that created along with the traditionals, um, the longevity. Gotcha, gotcha. And so now you get into the millennial, which is the most talked about generation and misunderstood. They have less experience, but they're most educated. They got a lot of degrees. Yes, yes, indeed. <laughs> a lot of degrees. And they're going to be your new leaders. And they have defined loyalty. It's about 24 months now, as opposed to 30 years. See the big difference? <laughs> that, is, that really, I love that you, you spoke about the two of them specifically, because that is a huge difference. I was talking to a friend about this the other day, and um, she's a millennial. And she was saying how, you know, she's ready to start her, the next phase of her life. And she'd only been at her current right? for about six months. <laughs> and, right. so, and so um, they're long, they yeah, because long term for them, six months is, is see that in the workplace was the dynamic mm -hmm. is that we do our time. The older generation, they've done their time and it's step increase. But for a millennial, if you told them what they're supposed to do and they master that, they're looking for the next thing. It's not 30 years. It's yeah. six months, 18 months, whatever. They keep it moving. Yeah. And so that's what's disrupting the workplace. Yes, indeed. So let me ask you this then. In the event, well, because we see this often too sometimes when we see millennials uh, as the boss, right? And their employees are, you know, maybe the boomers and maybe the Gen Xers. How, how does that dynamic work? Because isn't that kind of a hotbed for problems to, to just pop up? Communication problems, management style problems, expectation problems. It is. It is a problem because they communicate different. Their work expectation is different, for example. You know, we are so used to emailing in the workplace. We may pick up the phone and call or have a one-on-one -on -one meeting. They don't want all that. I can, if I can text you or slack you, I'm fine. Then their work-life balance, they like work-life integration, meaning that do I have to come to the job at eight to five? That's a traditional workplace and a work structure. They're what is called the deskless workforce. Wow. I don't have to work at the desk. I can work in my PJs at home. They have access to global markets now. Unlike what you and I, it was a middleman. They have direct access. So now you can see the dynamics changes. So why do I have to do all these rules? Just give me my deliverables and let me do it however I do it. Yeah, and that sounds good. Really that's the truth, right? So, for example, my son, he's a millennial. He does not like the word hard work. And I'm so used to saying, well, we got to work really hard. He said, what about smarter and efficient? Yes. So what is that saying? Um, work smart, not hard, right? Well, they have understand and they have understood, excuse me, the digital technology in the workplace. And they leverage that. Mm -hmm. And so I can understand because they grew up. On technology who goes to bed with their phone now my boys yeah. they sleep yeah. with their cell phone and laptop they're always on oh my gosh that sounds familiar i am guilty as charged i'm not a millennial i'm a proud gen xer but i yeah. am guilty of having millennial tendencies <laughs> that's, and that's okay and, and and the beauty of generation inclusiveness is that Although they, we have put people in little boxes, but we all have a little bit of all of it. That's the inclusiveness of, of it. But you asked the question, how do you manage that? Because oftentimes there's chaos in the workplace. I do a workshop called Manage, Managing and Minimizing Chaos in the Workplace. Mm, talk to us about that. Yeah, that, that's pretty good. But how you can do that, because oftentimes the culture needs a transformation. So, and I'm going to go off a little bit here because now we got this gig economy that's disrupting the workplace. And when I say gig, meaning contract, consulting work, you know, project-driven work, it's, it's, it's beyond just Uber, the freelancers. So what's happening is this new workforce that we're encountering is that a lot of the millennials and the other generation, they don't want so much a job, they want a lifestyle. Yes, yes, indeed. So the lifestyle says that, do I really have to come to work at nine to five for you to see me? So now organizations are embracing it and leveraging some of these tendency. So you ask, okay, how there is a form and a method that you can work together. And I call it what is called reverse mentorship, 
where the millennials and the boomers, they're, they're mentoring each other. So oh, the sound of that. Yeah, it is. It's reverse mentorship where maybe the millennial may have, um, they can mentor on the technology mm-hmm. efficiency versus the um, boomers can do the institution knowledge. So it's an exchange and it's an collaboration and it's an engagement is what's missing. So when you have organizations that don't do that, then you have chaos in the workplace. So that sounds like something along the lines of cross-cultural learning, right? It is. It is. Oh, that's wonderful. I'd not even um, thought about that side of it, the mentorship, because usually when we think of a mentor, we think of somebody that's, you know, several steps ahead of us. But as you said, in this age, millennials are several steps ahead with regard to technology and the, the, um, Boomers are several steps ahead with regard to industry information and knowledge. Right. So you just reverse it. You do what's called reverse mentorship. Not just one person giving the information. It's a collaborative effort. And it sounds like when you do use that principle of reverse mentorship, that you further have not only the employees engage with one another, but, but buy in more into the vision and the mission of the company for which they both work. Yes. Absolutely. And that's, and that's why a lot of organizations are in need of a culture transformation. Mm-hmm. So what, kept, what got you to where you at won't keep you. And oh. so our millennials remind us that. Mm-hmm. And so we have to all shift because we got culture, we got diversity, we got all these different things. But I say in a positive way that they have disrupted the way we even think about the workforce, even HR, how we recruit how we on board, how we retain, how we develop. They don't necessarily need to have a step-by-step progression. Their, their progression is like a, a scatterboard, you know, the rock climbing, a little bit of here, a little bit there, a little bit there. They're, they're, they're life learners. I like that visual. I like that visual because that makes, um, I'm a visual learner. Uh-huh. That makes perfect sense to me as opposed to going straight up a ladder. Um, right. That method because that I think is, more so real life, real professional life. It is. It's real life. And then that's how they do trans that's how they have their transferable skills. So again, as you can see, in order for this generation inclusive to work among these five generations, we definitely need a culture transformation of the culture first to embrace this idea of how we can work together. Wow, I love that. And I love that you you said that they're they're disruptors, you know. Oh, I love it. In a good way. Exactly, because usually disruptor is seen with, um, there's a negative connotation applied to it. But right. I really think of disruptor in this sense, um, a culture disruptor, um, just, just somebody that shakes up the status quo, because I think it's companies like that that will end up being more successful in the long run. Absolutely. And one of the things I tell people, one of the things about this generation is that the things that the Gen X and the boomer whisper about, they demand it. Wow. So I love it because when I was in the workplace, I wanted work-life balance. I wanted some flex schedule, and they demand that. That's that's that is on the table day one. Absolutely. I remember um, when I was looking for my very first job um, decades ago. Literally, um, I what I I didn't think I had any power, being that I couldn't ask for anything. I just had to accept what was given to me. And now, when I look at a lot of these millennials going out for seemingly their first jobs, they are requesting, demanding, expecting that things that, you know, you and I had to, couldn't even imagine. Couldn't imagine. Right? Now they expect it as a part of their saying yes to the job. And one thing I used to tell um, um, people when they would ask me advice on interviewing and things like that, I would say to them, make sure you interview the company just as much as the company's interviewing you. Absolutely. And I did that based on my own experience or rather my own inexperience of not (laughs) knowing to do that at the time, right? So you live and you learn. But I find that with millennials in in particular, um, I don't even need to give them that advice. They go in there ready. And I'm wondering, where did this come from? They are fearless and they're job creators. Yes. And so I've had one to tell me that if you don't, not in a negative way, but they said, if you don't do it, your competitor will. They have buy-in power. They have a lot of influence. And so because it's 86 million strong, it's 86 million strong. They're going to be the future leaders, whether we like it or not. Yes, so we might want to just buckle up and, and go for the ride. <laughs> 
and you know what a, a wonderful fun wild ride i think it's going to be yeah it challenges the rest of us you know the gen xers the boomers and the traditionalists to to really step our game up right to really engage ourselves more and do away with the old paradigms that we once held on to so yes much, right yeah and the so blueprint has expired that yeah. we know and so we have to get on board and like i tell uh, I shouldn't say tell, what I recommend to managers is that to do less parenting and more, co and more coaching. Less I parenting and more coaching in the workplace. I love that. I think that's, that's really poignant because before there was this paternalistic view. Yes. Of, you know, new employees and how people, how, how the C-suite would engage them yeah. um, at all sometimes. So if, in that paternalistic view, they can be a, a hands-on father or an absolute yes father yes and both of which uh you know doesn't always work out right but right the coaching aspect i i really love that the most i think it's the most beneficial i think it it empowers people to be proactive and absolutely there are consequences um you know to every action right because just because we try something doesn't mean it'll work but we have to be empowered to try and so i absolutely. think that's why i see millennials there's this there's this lack of fear on mm -hmm. their part you know? right Absolutely. But there's this wonderful cautionary tale that, that baby boomers and, and you know, um, Gen Xers and especially traditionalists um, can provide us with. Like there's something to be said about learning from people who are older than we are. Or, and I think because they're probably 10 steps ahead of us, you know? So I always think, oh, go ahead. No, I, I agree with you. And I think it's all about how you position that. Yes. And that's why I say if you stay away from parenting and more coaching, mm -hmm. we really could have a generation inclusive workforce. And that's yes. why the, you know, the mentoring piece, the reverse mentorship is going to be powerful because everybody has a part in it. It's engagement. And that's what's needed. I not do as I say, not do as I say, but be able to contribute, collaboration. And that's what they're so used to because, you know, in school, they collaborate with different people on projects and different things. And they want that. It's no sitting at the desk and just wonder what's going to happen. Right. So in that sense, it's like leading from within as opposed to from the front or from the back. Yes. Yes. I love, I love that. Now we would like to take a moment to thank our sponsor. Westbridge Solutions is a professional training company focusing on diversity, inclusion, cultural competence, and soft skills trainings. Westbridge Solutions offers a variety of innovative training courses, both in-person and online, live and self-paced. Their clients include corporations, government organizations, healthcare organizations, the nonprofit sector, universities, and individuals such as yourself. Through their rigorous training programs, trainees learn to understand differences, leverage commonalities, and achieve organizational, professional, and personal actualization. To learn more about Westbridge Solutions, please feel free to visit their website at www.westgrouptraining.com or follow them on social media on Facebook and Instagram. Westbridge Solutions, empowering professionals for success. So then let's go on to our next question that I have for you is, what do you think the three biggest obstacles are when dealing with a multi-generational workforce? So I think we started to touch upon that, just expectation. I, I think work expectation is number one because, you know, their expectation is totally different than somebody. They're not coming to work for a paycheck. Right. If you talk to a lot of um, millennials, it's, a, it's bigger than them. It's a cause. What are you doing outside? And uh, if companies, if they're still providing traditional benefit, that's not going to keep them. That's not what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. And so, again, their work expectation is not the nine to five. It's work-life integration. I know I have hired many millennials, and I love them because they are on all the time. Yes. So if I pick up the phone at nine o'clock, it's not a big deal or a taboo. They're ready to go. That's when they get their best ideas. This so, is what I love about millennials. Yes. I start with you 100%. They are always ready. And so there's never too late or too early, you know? Right. And I love it. So it's like a buffet of a window of opportunity that you can talk to them. And I love it. I remember my, I got a, my son and he's a Z generation and I took him on a, um, a, a event with me I was speaking and so he was doing some editing 
And I'm like, okay, Bryce, it's time to go to bed. He starts at 12 at 1. And, he, and I reached over and watched him. He was really into, he does his best work. Yes. So we have to res expect that, you know, respect that for number one. But then really, what is it that they want in the workplace? They do want their creativity. They really want to utilize their skills. They're not just going to a job for a paycheck and benefits, mm -hmm. you know. Absolutely. They will go without benefit. They will do a gig. And as long as it's making it fulfilling them, they know that up front. They're not going to wait 10 years and say, I need to be fulfilled. They want to be fulfilled now. <laughs> that's the the big takeaway that, that that i have from what you just said is that we have to respect their process because it allows them to be creative and they need that now it's like um it's like a shot of dopamine for them yes right? yes doing their their work and they're in the zone and and again this is where i'm i'm guilty of having millennial tendencies and that's not a bad thing at all no it's not so to our millennials listening out there, um, I love that I can at least have some of these wonderful traits, right? And, and for me, I know that when I'm working on, let's say, um, designing something or creating something, um, I, I think to myself at first, okay, this is what I need to get done. But then once I get into it, it doesn't matter how late it is, yeah. how tired I am, I won't stop until it's completed and it's exactly what I want. And then when you look at the work you've created, you know, whatever that work may be, you're just, you're fulfilled. And only then can I let my mind rest, only then. And Absolutely. so that's why I can respect the process because once you get started, you know, and I remember years ago, my mom used to say to me, well, it's time for you to go to bed. And I'm just like, well, I just need to do this for one more minute. And it right. was three hours later. <laughs> so, well, and, and I love that because that's, they, we have never been able, just think about it in the workplace. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been able to use your true talents and skills? Yeah. You either had to learn them mm -hmm. and be in a box Yes. Or you go over here where these millennials, like, I'm coming in here and this is what, they recognize what they want to do early on. And so one millennial told me, he said, all we have is now. Oh, yes. I, I, I was like, that's the game changer right there. All we have is now. So why not now? Exactly. And so some people probably say, well, that's entitlement. No, no, no. We told them as parents, you can have anything you want to have. If you work hard, we just didn't tell them how long it was going to take. And they missed that piece. It was like, okay, you told me I can do that part. So that's one thing. And then communication. That is a big piece. Uh, I believe that how we communicate is, has changed so much, um, even from a customer service standpoint. A lot of people say that millennials do not know how to communicate, and I beg the difference. I can remember, and I tell this story all the time, I've gone to a restaurant, and my husband and I were going out you know, for dinner, and we were escorted to our table. And as I was navigating through my table, I noticed a universal posture, and it had nothing to do with gender, race, color, anything. It was one of these things where everybody was bowed down on their phone. Nobody was talking. This was dinner. Oh, everybody was on their phone, taking pictures of their food and then texting people across from them. So wow. what I say about that, I know I say we can't communicate. We just communicate different. Yes. So in the workplace, we need to embrace the different methods of communicating. So that's the one of the challenge. I mean, a lot of companies are going with Slack and they, they're, they're allowing employees to text as opposed to calling in when they're sick or whatever. So there's different ways of embracing communication. And then my last one, we have to use technology. Yes, indeed. I'm with this you. is a digital world. We have to use it because we have access to it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more on that. I feel like, um, us not using it will hold us back. It will prevent us from being productive. And Absolutely. To your point about an employee um, being able to work from home because of technology, I think um, even when they are sick, you know, and not that I'm right. going to do that, but we all do it, right? And so this will actually help with productivity, you know, rather than have somebody, you know, come to work, make everybody else sick, you know, or schlep in and, and not feel well and then end up feeling worse. This person can be at home in their pajamas, like you said. And working. Their chicken soup, whatever makes them feel better, and working and being productive while they're able to get better. So I think that that is a key component. It's a, it's, a, it's a game changer. And so a lot of companies like the Cox of the World, they just now unveiled for their professional staff that they have unlimited PTO. 
Wow. Yeah, and so what that means is like if you're sick, you're so committed to the work, but you're not getting penalized because you've been out for so many days. They're still going to work. Right. So the mindset from an HR standpoint, they very much dis they disrupted it, you know. And then you got to be agile. The agile t- you have to be because we're working in teams across culture, across countries, and all of that. Mm-hmm. So technology allow you to do that, and we have to also remember that our customers. Mm-hmm. Or just like I'm, or millennials as well. They want the same thing too. So it's not just an internal customer service, it's external as well. Wow. I love that point that you made about professional and technological agility. I yes. feel like that also works for the, the prospective employee because that makes them a more attractive candidate to any um, company that they're going to go Absolutely. To. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, wow. Okay. This, I, I'd like to ask you then, this has been fascinating to learn because every time I do talk to you about millennials, you, you give me gems to walk away with. And I'm like, oh, I never thought about that before. <laughs> you know, and even when you know which, you know, generation you fall into, you can even have um, insights about your own generation. Absolutely. You know? Because before, um, before millennials showed up, um, Gen X was like myself were that generation. Yes. And now, you know, I, I'll use a, a quick example. Um, I don't even watch um, award shows anymore because half the time I don't know who's on. Well, the people, that's <laughs> exactly know? right. But then I'll get in the car and I'll turn on, you know, my radio stations and I love the music. I just don't know who sings who, it. You who, know? who it is. Right. And Absolutely. That's, and that's another lesson to, to myself where I'm just like, oh, I have no idea who this is, but I know this song. Right. Um, Absolutely. That shows that, you know, that that crossover teaching is actually happening. So in that sense, you know, with regard to the music industry, they're teaching um, other generations about millennial music now. Like we can, and, and that shows me that we can appreciate things that are not of us, right? That are not Absolutely. of us. Just like Chichella this weekend, we were yes. glue watching Beyonce. Yes. I'm, a, I'm a Gen X, but I'm an older Gen X. I could be in the baby boom. My husband and I was bumping to that because it's like, wow, she's a beast, right? Yes, yes, I understood what she was trying to do. So the whole family, just think about it. My family has five generations, or well, four generations. We got a boomer, Gen X, we got a millennial and we got a Z generation in these four walls. I love it. I love it. I think that's fantastic. And that that's what I hope through through this podcast, through global fluency, through the movement I'm trying to create by by just having these amazing interviews with with wonderful people like yourself that that show us these different um, different dimensions of diversity that will be yes. learn more about each other, but also um, be more inclusive in the sense that we're able to enjoy something together and we all get something from it, right? Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So then let me ask you, Tanya, what solutions do you recommend for, for a company or a group of people or even a group of friends that are multi-generational experiencing, you know, some growing pains as a group? Well, I, I think that once we become aware of the different generation, Awareness is so important because we, we live in stereotype. Yes. You know? So once we begin to, to have conversation, I think organizations need to have, you know, like they have the ERG groups when diversity. I think we do need to have something where we can get to explore the different generation and listen to what it is that they, what they're talking about and their perspective. Because, you know, technology is changing. The way we do business is changing and we all have to embrace that. But we have to embrace it in such a way where we want to work together in an agile team. But one of the things I want to leave people to understand is that although we may be in difference in a lot of different things, but we all have commonalities. We just go about it differently. I mean, you could ask a Gen X, a boomer, or a millennial about um, career opportunity. They all want that. It's just how they go about getting it. One wants to do the rock climbing wall. One wants to do step by step, you know, that kind of thing. It's just all about how you do it. So we do have a lot in common, and we don't realize that. But the only way we're going to be able to realize that if we do a more education and awareness around that. And I do a lot with that. I go into organizations and I help them look at where they're at as a culture and where they want to be and how do we use that spectrum to get all the generation on the same page. So I love doing that kind of training and different awareness. 
and it shows because every <laughs> time you talk about multiple generations, a multi-generation workforce, um, our listeners can't see this, but your face lights up. Everybody yeah. says that. I love it because I think it's a game changer. And I think that it's just fascinating to me. You know, we, I don't ever, when I do presentations or speaking engagement or keynotes, I never bash a generation. My goal is to educate and show that we got something in common and it's okay that you do it differently. That's real diversity in my mind. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more. And you said something that really um, just lit me up for a second in the best way because part of the mission here and, and the tagline for Global um, Fluency Podcast um, is exploring um, differences, leveraging commonalities. So when you said that, that really struck me to my core because that's the whole purpose of these conversations. You know? Absolutely. Because I you would never... You would never hear me do it one way. I think we have to do it in commonality standpoint. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more. And so in closing, tell us something, one thing that you would like to impart upon our millennials, because I feel like um, part of, of the conversation and, and what I hear from you is that people want to be seen and appreciated for who they uniquely are. Be that the traditionalists, be that the millennials, what would you like to impart upon our listeners in closing? You know, when you think about the, all the generations that we talked about, you're talking about the multi-generation piece, at the, we mentioned that they, we all have something in common, but we want to be valued. At the end of the day, we all want to have some voice or be valued for what we bring to the table. We don't want to be judged for what we don't bring to the table that looks the same. And I think different is okay. It's, it's a good thing. It's, 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 it really is a good thing. And I think we, I don't think I know what we need to do. We need to embrace not just the diversity, but just the different perspective because it's a, it's, it's a good thing. And I think we can learn that way. And it makes you think like, oh, okay, I didn't see it in their lens. And that's what we need to all walk away, not just knowing everything, but knowing that that's a different perspective and it's okay. Because mm -hmm. it can get us to the same common goal, especially if you're in the, in the workforce. Difference yeah. is not, that doesn't mean we can't arrive at the same goal. We just arrive at it differently. I love it. I love it. It sounds to me like you're saying that we should be, we should value one another, but in doing that, we should become more empathetic towards one oh, another. Oh, absolutely. I do. And I have, like I said, I'm, I gravitate to a lot of millennials for whatever reason, but they tell me the one thing that make me more approachable is that I do not judge. I just sit and listen. I'm like, tell me more. I love that because it, it gives me the impression and I'm certain that it gives them the impression that you see them. You see the whole person standing in front of you. I do. And that's what whole, you know, we talk about that in diversity inclusive, bring your whole self, yes. but yet we're fighting for, cause we're different. But if you truly going to bring your whole self, then we need to really embrace it and say, Oh, okay. I didn't see it that way. Yeah. I, I couldn't agree with you more. Sometimes I think, um, in the in the endeavor to bring our whole self, we forget to bring both of our ears. Right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> so That's I'm right. Judge, I'm taking one out of Judge Judy's book. I am a secret Judge Judy watcher. And now the world knows. <laughs> said something that 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 resonated with me ever since I was a little girl. I've been watching her for a long time, and she says we have um, one mouth and two ears for a reason, right? So we're supposed to listen twice as hard. Yes. And you know, based on our conversation today, that's what you're telling us to do. That's a part of what you're telling us to do. Listen twice yes. as hard with twice. so we can see the person in front of us and value them. Oh, that's, that's, that's beautiful. I mean, see the person in front of you. Oh, wow. Tanya, this has been so phenomenal. <laughs> I'm thrilled to have had you on this show. Tell our listeners where they can find you, how they can contact you, your website. I want them to be able to locate you, talk to you, benefit from your expertise, have you come speak to their organization so we can continue this conversation and set them on the course for having a truly multi-generational workplace. Well, you definitely can find me at Tanya, it's T-O-N-I-A speaks.com. And that's where you would see the generational connector. You would definitely see my website where all the courses that I have um, 
put together. And, and then I think I got a video out there as well. I'm on social media. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Facebook and Instagram as well. And again, it's Tanya, T-O-N-I-A Morris, M-O-R-R-I-S speaks with a S dot com. And then if they want to call me, it's 404-663-4049. I wait to hear from you. Wonderful. So for my traditionalists, my boomers, my Gen Xers, my millennials, and my Gen Zs, um, this has been, for me, for sure, a, a true pleasure to speak to you. And, and I love that you are a resource for everyone to be able to go to so we can learn how to have more authentic conversations. Absolutely. So Tanya, thank you for being on Global Fluency Podcast. Thank you so much. Mwah! Thank you very much. And for everyone else out there, let's continue the conversation. Take what we discussed today and go share that conversation with somebody. And once you do, send me an Instagram, send me a LinkedIn message. Let me know how that conversation, based on this conversation, how that changed an experience for you, how that changed your day. If it caused you to look at something differently. I remember these conversations they don't have to be difficult, but we do have to start them. And even That's for right. the ones that are difficult, it's worth the journey, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Right, everyone, this has been Bertine Crevacore West with my special guest, Ms. Tanya Morris. So thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next episode of Global Fluency Podcast. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Global Fluency Podcast. Tune in every second and fourth Tuesday of the month at 10 a.m. for our latest episode. Connect with us on our social media. You can find us on Facebook at Global Fluency Podcast and on Instagram at Westbridge Solutions, LLC. Global Fluency Podcast. Understanding differences. Leveraging commonalities. Let's keep the conversation going. Going.